The Bourbon reforms Castilian, reformas Borbonicas, were a set of economic and political legislation promulgated by the Spanish crown under various kings of the House of Bourbon, mainly in the 18th century. The strengthening of the crown's power with clear lines of authority to officials contrasted to the complex system of government that evolved under the Habsburg monarchs. In particular, the Crown pursued state supremacy over the Catholic Church, resulting in the suppression of the Society of Jesus in 1767 as well as an attempt to abolish ecclesiastical privilege fuero ecclesiastico. .The reforms resulted in significant restructuring of the administrative structure and personnel. The reforms were intended to stimulate manufacturing and technology to modernize Spain. In Spanish America, the reforms were designed to make the administration more efficient and to promote its economic, commercial and fiscal development. The Crown did so, hoping that it would have a positive effect on the economy of Spain. Furthermore, the Bourbon reforms were intended to limit the power of Creoles and re-establish Spanish supremacy over the colonies. The reforms achieved mixed results administratively but succeeded in alienating the local elites of the Americas who called themselves Criollos and eventually led to the demise of all overseas dominions of the Spanish crown. Topic: <laughs> End of Habsburg era. At the end of the 17th century, Spain was an ailing empire, facing declining revenues and the loss of military power, ruled by a weak king, Charles II, who left no successor. Even before his death in 1700, the European powers were already positioning themselves to see which noble house would succeed in placing someone on the Spanish throne and thereby gain its vast empire. Louis XIV of France asked for and received the Pope's consent for his grandson, Philip of Anjou, a great nephew of Charles, to take the throne. On his deathbed, Charles willed the crown to the French-born successor, but an international conflict ensued, known as the War of the Spanish Succession. <laughs> Beginning of Bourbon era After the war, the new French dynasty had to surrender in compromise with the Austrian Habsburgs some of the Spanish Habsburg Empire's European territories, and some maritime enclaves such as Jamaica, some of the Balearic Islands and the continental stronghold of Gibraltar and grant a monopoly on the valuable African slave trade with the Americas to England. Philip V of Spain, the first king of the House of Bourbon, took measures intended to counter the decline of Spanish power. Even before the war, the state of the empire was precarious. When Charles II died, the military was practically non-existent, consisting of only one division, the treasury was bankrupt, and there was no state promotion of commerce or industry. Philip V and his ministers needed to act quickly to reconstruct the empire. <inaudible> <inaudible> French influence The new Bourbon kings kept close ties with France and used many Frenchmen as advisors. French innovations in politics and social manners never fully replaced Spanish laws and traditions but became an important model in both areas. As a result, there was an influx of French goods, ideas, and books, which helped spread the ideas of the Enlightenment throughout the Spanish world. In a sense, all things French came into fashion during the subsequent century and gave rise to a new type of person, the Afrancesado, who welcomed the new influence. In addition, during the War of Succession, the ports in Spanish America were blockaded by British and Dutch fleets. Spain turned to France for help with the export of its goods, which was the first time in Spanish colonial history that trade occurred with a foreign nation. The new commercial relationship stimulated the colonial economy, especially that of Chile. In mainland Spain The early reforms were aimed at improving the economic and political structure of Spain. They sought to modernize agriculture, construction of ships, and infrastructure to monitor and incite economic integration and development on a regional and national level. These reforms unfortunately fell through for Spain. The socio-economic reforms left the country with almost no investment capital that hindered the nationalization of industries and so disrupted the class system. It left almost no middle class and separated the lower and upper significantly. 
As a result of the early reforms, the country was dwindling and its progression rate put it behind its neighboring countries such as Great Britain and France. The failure of reform measures became evident when Spain, under Charles III, lost the Seven Years' War with Great Britain, 1756 to 1763. Charles III's councillors sought more detailed reports of Spain's overseas territories, and now understood the need to take them fully into account. The new wave of reforms included larger exploitation of resources in the colonies, increased taxes, the opening of new ports allowed to trade only with Spain, and the establishment of several state monopolies. In Spanish America In Spanish America, José del Campillo y Cosios Nuevo Sistema de Gobierno Económico para la América New System of Economic Government for America 1743 was a key text that shaped the reforms. He compared the colonial systems of Britain and France with that of Spain, as the first two nations reaped far greater benefits than Spain. He advocated reforming Spain's economic relations with its overseas territories to a system more like the mercantilism of Francis Jean-Baptiste Colbert (1619–1683). The Bourbon reforms have been termed a revolution in government for their sweeping changes in the structure of administration that sought to strengthen the power of the Spanish state, decrease the power of local elites in favor of office holders from the Iberian Peninsula, and increase revenues for the crown. The bulk of the changes in Spanish America came in the second half of the 18th century following the Visita General, General Inspection of New Spain 1765-1771 by José de Galvez, who was later named Minister of the Indies. The reforms attempted in New Spain were implemented elsewhere in Spanish America subsequently. There had been one earlier reform in the creation of the new Viceroyalty of New Granada 1717, carved out from the Viceroyalty of Peru to improve the administration of the overseas possessions. The new Viceroyalty was created initially in 1717, suppressed just six years later, and then permanently established in 1739, still earlier than the reforms of the late 18th century. It was an administrative change that reflected the recognition as early as the 16th century that the northern area of South America had certain challenges of distance from Peru. There had been earlier creations of captaincies general in Guatemala and Venezuela, marking an increase in their importance. In 1776, a second jurisdiction, the Viceroyalty of Rio de la Plata was also carved out of the Viceroyalty of Peru in 1776 as part of José de Galvez's comprehensive administrative reform. In the same year, an autonomous captaincy general was also established in Venezuela. Under Charles III, colonial matters were concentrated in a single ministry, which took powers away from the Council of the Indies. Furthermore, the advances Americans Criolos had made in the local bureaucracy in the past century and a half, usually through the sale of offices, were checked by the direct appointment of supposedly more qualified and disinterested Spanish officials. Charles III also initiated the difficult process of changing the complex administrative system of the former ruling family, the Habsburgs. Corregidors were to be replaced with a French institution, the Intendant. The Intendancies had the intended effect of further decentralizing the administration at the expense of viceroys, captains general and governors, since Intendants were directly responsible to the Crown and were granted large powers in economic and political matters. The intendancy system proved to be efficient in most areas and led to an increase in revenue collection. Intendancy seats were mainly based in large cities and successful mining centers. Almost all of the new intendants were peninsulares, people who were born in Spain, exacerbating the conflict between peninsulares and criollos, who wished to retain some control of local administration. Charles III and Charles IV also reversed the advances that criollos had made in the high courts audiencias. Under the Habsburgs, the crown had sold Audiencia positions to Criollos. The Bourbon kings ended this policy. By 1807, only 12 out of 99 Audiencia judges were Creoles. With regards to the economy, collection of taxes was more efficient under the intendancy system. In 1778, Charles III established the Decree of Free Trade, which allowed the Spanish-American ports to trade directly with one another and most ports in Spain. Therefore, commerce would no longer be restricted to four colonial ports Veracruz, Cartagena, Lima, Calo, and Panama. Tax reductions were given to the silver mining industry. 
Tobacco proved to be a successful crop after state monopolies were expanded. Also, many of the colonies began to produce an abundance of resources, which became vital to many European powers and the British colonies in North America and the Caribbean despite the fact that most of this trade was considered contraband since it was not carried on Spanish ships. Most of the Bourbon kings tried to outlaw this trade through various programs like increasing the customs receipts, with little avail. Spanish America barely had an operational military before the Bourbon reforms, and what it had was inconsistent and scattered. The Bourbons created a more organized militia and first used men deployed straight from Spain as officers, but soon that broke down, as locals took most positions. The colonial militias became a source of prestige for status hungry Criollos. The hierarchy of the military was racially based. Militias were often created along race lines, with militias for whites, blacks and mixed-race people. Almost all the higher officers were Spanish-born, with Criollos occupying the secondary levels of command. The Bourbons also made the government more secular. The political role of the church was diminished but never removed completely. Unlike the Habsburgs, who often selected churchmen to fill political offices, the Bourbons preferred to appoint career military officers. The process reached a high point with the suppression of the Society of Jesus in 1767. The Jesuits were one of the wealthiest religious orders and had been instrumental in the missionary work carried out in the Americas and the Philippines. Because they had major rivals in the other orders of the church, their dismissal was greeted with covert approval. The Crown also tried to place the more secular clergy in the church hierarchy, reversing a trend since the beginning of the colonial period of having the regular clergy fill these posts. Overall, these changes had little effect on the church as a whole. Towards the end of the Bourbon reign, on the eve of independence, the Crown attempted to confiscate church property, but the measure proved hard to enforce. The Catholic Church. The Catholic Church played a major role in the Bourbon reforms, specifically in the vice royalties. A vice royalty is basically a territory governed by a viceroy, a ruler exercising authority in a colony on behalf of a sovereign. The Catholic Church was the most widely regarded church among the vice royalties of Spanish America, and the new colonies brought forth an opportunity to spread Catholicism. The Catholic Church came about as a religious and political entity in the Iberian Peninsula in the 15th and 16th centuries. From here, missionaries who possessed the banner of Christ came to the Americas for a fresh, new environment for Christianity to thrive. There was a clear alliance between the Church and the Crown in Spanish America. Ecclesiastical institutions were allotted some freedom from the Crown. The fuero eclesiástico, or clerical immunity, granted clergy members immunity from the royal courts. According to this fuero, any civil crime or criminal offense will be heard in front of the ecclesiastical instead of the royal or local court. This privilege was then extended to all clerics, nuns, priests, monks, and friars. This fuero extended to the land owned by the individuals and institutions which means the Spanish crown could not exercise justice physically nor collect taxes. Missionizing in maroon societies in Spanish America became essential for the nature of politics of African resistance in the Iberian Atlantic world. The maroons were Africans who escaped slavery in America and then mixed with the indigenous people. In the 16th century, missionizing native peoples was seen as a moral conquest. It was used as a tool of pacification among Africans who escaped slavery and made their home in Spanish America. In Ecuador, Santo Domingo, Mexico, and Panama, imprinting and pacifying maroon societies was very dependent on the spread of Spanish Catholicism. Pacification is an attempt to create or maintain peace through agreements and diplomacy. Christianization often conflicted with the relationships the maroons created with Catholic clerics and created tensions. Spanish cultural hegemony functioned to imprint submission to religious practices. Maroons, as well as other Africans, rapidly learned that Catholicism was necessary for political legitimation. However, bringing Christianity to light did not interrupt the development of localized practices that observed religious traditions of Africans and indigenous Americans. Maroon communities on the coast of colonial Ecuador learned how Christianization became a tool for Afro-Amerindian rebels in Spain's empire and in the African diasporic world. 
While an Afro-Christian diasporic identity may have been in its formative stage during the 16th century, transfers of knowledge between the Old World and the New were readily apparent in European interactions with Maroons on the Esmeraldas coast. This case study of the Maroons of colonial Ecuador will allow us to see in three acts, or phases, how clerical intervention and the discourse of Christian conversion shaped colonization over time, ultimately yielding a modus vivendi between rebel African slaves and Spanish colonial authorities. Bryant, O'Toole, Vincent, 2012-96-97, the reforms caused many religious tensions as well as social tensions. One of the most major modifications in the Bourbon reforms was the expulsion of the Jesuits. The Society of Jesus, the members being the Jesuits, had become one of the most powerful organizations in the colonies at the time and had a distinct amount of power until the Bourbon reforms. In 1767, Charles III of Spain ordered the expulsion of 2,200 Jesuits to be removed from the vice royalties. Of the 2,200 that were exiled, 678 were from Mexico New Spain, with 75% of the Jesuits from Mexico being Mexican-born. The expulsion of the Jesuits which was frowned upon among many colonists. Many historians believe that the Bourbon reforms would bring forth self-confidence for American-born Spaniards. The expulsion of the Jesuits confronted the liberal ideology of the 19th century and conservative positions of the time. The expulsion represented aspects of liberal ideology as a need to break away from colonial past, progress and civilization as attainable objectives, education as a neutral term of religious instruction, and the separation of the Catholic Church and state. These factors played a major role in the modernization of Spanish America. Spanish soldiers went to Mexico and rounded up the Jesuits to be exiled to Italy. The Jesuits were then placed on Spanish warships and sent to the Italian port of Civitavecchia. Upon arrival, Pope Clement XIII refused to let the prisoners set foot on papal territory. The warships then went to the island of Corsica, but due to a rebellion on shore, it took a while to let the Jesuits onto the island. Bernardo Tanucci, advisor to Charles III, did not welcome the Jesuits into Naples and the Jesuits were threatened with death if they crossed the border of the Papal States back to Naples. Historian Charles Gibson stated that the expulsion of the Jesuits was a sudden and devastating move by the Spanish crown to assert royal control, emphasis on the dominant role of the state in ecclesiastical reform sometimes made the church seem defensive and resistant to change and modern ideas. Many nuns of the 18th century were resistant and even rebelled against the thought of the church and state joining together. Many priests and nuns were hesitant to join forces with the state because they feared the state would gain too much power and try to alter the pre-existing ideals and beliefs of the Catholic Church. With the formation of Spanish America, the Catholic Church and the Spanish Crown formed an alliance that lasted for centuries both in the Iberian Peninsula and Spanish America. Effects <laughs> 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 Though the legislation passed by the Bourbons did much to reform the empire, it was not enough to save it. The racial tensions continued to grow and massive discontent lead to a number of revolts, the most important of which were the rebellion of Tupac Amaru II and revolt of the Comuneros. Criollos, Mestizos, and Indians were among the most common to be involved in such revolts. Over time, these uprisings led to the fight for the independence of the American colonies. See also Enlightenment in Spain Spanish-American Enlightenment Historiography of colonial Spanish America Nueva Planta decrees issued by Philip V, 1707-1716, reorganizing the royal government of Spain Notes <laughs>